beauties, Rosie here from RosiePanda.com, a fashion, sewing, and lifestyle blog. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here. So in today's video, we're going to be making the Abbey dress from Rosie Pena pattern. So the Abbey dress is a really gorgeous pattern designed for knit fabric. So any medium weight knit will do perfect with this pattern. We're going to be using a Ponte knit in this video. So go ahead and grab your fabric and your pattern and we can go ahead and get started. There are a few options for printing your pattern. You can use the print at home file where you print off each sheet and you tape them together. Or you can use a copy shop version. We have a large format for US and we also have an AO sized format. That one does come on three different sheets of paper that you'll have to tape together just because AO does have a size restriction for each page. So I printed my file and I traced off my size to a separate sheet of paper. Make sure you transfer all the markings and the grain lines. I did forget to mark my grain line on my side front, but luckily I've worked with this pattern several times. So if you're a beginner, I have my fabric folded with right sides together. So there is two layers of fabric. And then I just laid out all of my pattern pieces according to the grain line. Grain line runs parallel to the selvage edge of the fabric. So I just placed large washers on top of my pattern to keep my patterns in place. You can use large washers, you can use pattern weights, you can use sewing pins, whatever you're comfortable with. And then here I'm tracing my darts. I use tracing paper and then a tracing wheel. As you can see, it just leaves a chalk marking where I need to sew my darts. And then I just continue cutting out my fabric, making sure to make marking notations of my notches. That way I know what is the center back. And then also for the bust, definitely want to make sure you mark the bust notches because you are going to have to ease in the front to the side front here I'm just marking with chalk and X on the wrong side of the fabric this just helps me in the sewing process to make sure I have everything facing the correct way whenever you have fabric that looks pretty similar on both the wrong and the right side this is a really good tip to make sure you stay on track So now we're going to use our Trico interfacing to cut out pattern piece number five. And this is a thin strip of pattern paper, so I do like to use sewing pins um, whenever I'm attaching this to the interfacing to cut out. So go ahead and just cut out your Trico interfacing um, two times. Have that, we're going to go ahead and fuse the strips to the center front pieces of the front fabric. So make sure you're working on the wrong side and go ahead and follow the manufacturer directions on your fusible interfacing. But normally you're fusing the bubbly side or kind of the textured side of the interfacing. That is the side that goes on to the wrong side of the fabric. So make sure you're not ironing on top of the bubbly side because that will stick to your iron. Okay, so now we're going to pin the side front to the front. If you're following along with the pattern instructions, this is step number two. So you're just going to pin the side front to the front with right sides together. And I like to start first at the notches. Uh, we are going to ease the front piece into the side front piece and this is just going to allow for a little bit of extra room for the bust. Just use as many pins as you need to to get everything in place but once we get this to the sewing machine we'll make sure that everything is nice and flat as we're sewing to make sure we don't have any ripples or bubbling. Continue pinning your side front to your front along the princess seam and you want to do this to both sides so make sure you're doing this to the left side front in front and the right side front in front as well. Before we go to our sewing machine, we're going to move on to step number 3 and step number 11 in your pattern instructions. So grab your back bodice piece and you're going to place that with right sides together along the center back seam, matching your double notch. And you're just going to repeat that step to your center back skirt pieces. So pin along the center back seam, matching those double notches. Now that we have most of our pieces pinned together, we can go ahead and go to our sewing machine. And first we're going to sew our side fronts to our fronts along the pinned edge using half of an inch seam allowance. And again, making sure to remove those pins as you go. Once you have your princess seam sewn, you can go ahead and just press the seam open at your pressing table. 
I like to use something called a pressing ham. This is just more of a rounded shape and helps the fabric kind of lay as it would over a bust. Um, so go ahead and just press that seam open and then you can choose to leave the edges raw or you can also just serge the seam off. Whichever finishing technique you prefer for your garments, go ahead and just do that once you have your seam sewn. So we're gonna work on the center back seam. So grab your back bodice pieces and make sure you're working on the center back seam and you're gonna sew along with half of an inch seam allowance. Then you're just gonna press that seam open and use whichever finishing technique you prefer. Next, you're gonna repeat that step to your center back skirt pieces. Again, making sure you're working on the center back. Before we press this seam open, we're gonna move on to the darts. So to sew a dart, um, it's actually pretty simple. You just wanna first pin along the dart point. So that's just the end of the dart. And then with right sides together, you're gonna match those dart legs, so those double lines. You're gonna match those again with right sides together and you're just gonna pin along that line. So whenever we go to the sewing, you're just gonna sew from the start point of the dart, so the dart legs. And then you're gonna go to the end point of the dart. We're not gonna backstitch when we get to the end of the dart. We're actually gonna just sew off of the fabric slightly and we're gonna leave a few inches of thread, enough to make a double knot. So go ahead and just start at the dart legs and then sew to the end point of the dart. Again, you're just gonna sew slightly off of the fabric. Then you're just gonna remove your fabric, again, leaving those few inches of extra thread and then you're just gonna double knot the end of the fabric. This step is just to prevent rippling at the end of the dart and it just helps everything look a little bit more neat. You can go ahead and press the seams and you also wanna press your darts towards the center back. So here I'm just showing you the side front and the front on the wrong side. So we have those interfaced front edges and then I just have my surged princess seam on both sides. So we have the left side front and front and the right side front and front. Again, that's the wrong side. And here I'm showing you the right side so you can just see that princess seam along the edge. We have the center back skirt pieces. These are sewn together already and I have it with right sides facing up. Don't mind the watermarks, my iron kind of spilled on it. So I'm just gonna pin the back bodice piece to the back skirt, again, with right sides together. And I like to pin first starting at the center seams. So make sure you have the bulk of one seam facing one way and the bulk of the other seam facing the other way. This is just gonna remove some extra thickness that can occur. So if you're following along in the pattern instructions, this is step number 12. Um, and then once you have everything nice and pinned, we're gonna just take that to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this edge with half of an inch seam allowance. Again, removing those pins as we go. And just take a little bit of extra care once you get to the center seams to make sure you have everything nice and lined up correctly. Once you have that seam sewn, just go ahead and neaten the seam with the serger or your desired method and just go ahead and press that seam up towards the bodice. So here I'm just showing you the wrong side of the back. I have that seam pressed up towards the bodice. Next, we're gonna move on to step number four in the pattern instructions, and we're gonna sew the front pieces to the back with right sides together. So I like to pin starting at the bottom of the seam first, so I'm just gonna place my fabric again with right sides together, and I'm starting on the bottom hem of the side seam. Just go ahead and pin there first, and then I like to pin at the very top of the seam, and then I kind of just pin throughout. This just helps me to make sure that I have everything nice and even as I'm sewing. Go ahead and continue pinning along both side seams and pin along both shoulder seams as well. Once we're done with all the pinning, just go ahead and take your garment to your sewing machine and sew with half of an inch seam allowance. Again, making sure to remove those pins as you go. So if you're a beginner sewist, make sure you're backstitching at the very start of your seam and at the very end of your seam. This is common practice in all of your sewing that you'll do. So you wanna make sure you secure those seams at the start and also at the end. Another common mistake that I noticed in beginner sewing is that there's um, puckers or gathers that will occur. And if you just make sure as you're sewing that everything is nice and flat on both layers, then you shouldn't have any problems with puckers or gathering. All right, you guys, so we are almost done with our Abby dress. So here we have the side seams shown and also these shoulder seams sewn. 
Next, we're gonna move on to step number seven. So first, we're gonna just neaten the center front edges, um, the interfaced edge. So you can do that with a serger, or you can also just press to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and then sew a straight stitch. We need to fold the button stand to the right side along the fold line. And then we're gonna sew across the neckline and the bottom hem of the button stand with half of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and just cut off any loose threads and then you can choose to trim off some of that excess bulk across the neckline and across the hem. I personally like to leave it there. I feel like it adds a little bit more stabilization to the neckline um, and also to the hem. But next we're just going to fold that um, center front button stand to the wrong side. And before we finish our neckline, our armholes and our hem, we're going to first sew a straight stitch along the button stand. So for this step, we're just going to sew very close to the serged or neaten edge. Um, you can work from either the right side or the wrong side, whichever you prefer. I'm starting from the bottom hem of the button stand and I'm just going to do a straight stitch along the entire button stand, again close to that serged edge. And this is just to secure that button stand in place. So a few tips here, this is going to be a stitch that is visible from the right side of your garment. So I do like to go a little bit more slowly along this seam, again making sure that everything is nice and flat. I also like to use a longer stitch length. So here I'm using a 4.0 stitching length. So this is a little bit longer than your standard 2.5 stitching length that you would use for your seams. Once you finish securing your front button stand on both sides, you're just going to go ahead and trim off any loose threads that you have. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to finishing the neckline and also the armholes. But um, I wanted to show you a walking foot. So this is a tool that you can use um, for knit fabrics and it helps to um, feed the fabric evenly through your sewing machine. So it's going to feed the bottom of your layer and the top of your layer evenly. Um, and this just helps prevent any um, puckering again or any kind of wavy seams that you'll notice on hems, um, especially whenever you're looking at knit garments. It comes standard on most sewing machines. Um, you don't have to use this, but if you're noticing that you have wavy seams on your knits, this is going to help you um, along with sewing a little bit more slowly and again, of course, using the correct needle and the correct thread. Um, so I am also using a 4.0 stitch for finishing my neckline and my armholes and my hems as well, just because again, this is visible stitching um, and it's more of a decorative and functional kind of a thing. So I do like to use a little bit of a longer stitch, but again, use what you prefer. You can use a zigzag stitch, you can use a straight stitch, you can use any kind of decorative stitching that you prefer. You can also use a contrasting thread to add a little bit more of a design feature, whichever you prefer. Um, this is your garment, so definitely make it your own. I wanted to point out that I did not serge the raw edges of the hems. Um, and I just like to do this again to prevent kind of the puckering or waviness that can occur. Um, whenever you're serging a seam or serging a raw edge, it does have a tendency to stretch out the fabric slightly. So whenever I am sewing with knit garments, I do not serge the hemmed areas of the garment. I usually just serge the seams of the garment. Um, so that's why you won't see any serged raw edges along the finished armhole, neckline, or hems of this garment. But again, it's your garment, so you can serge those edges first, or you can leave them raw like I did here. Um, like I said, we're working on a knit, so the edges are not going to fray. We don't have to worry about these stitches coming loose or anything like that. When you finish sewing all of your hems, you can just trim off any loose threads that you might have, and then you're going to go ahead and just press your garment at your ironing table. But you don't want to overdo the pressing on knit garments, because this can kind of cause some of that waviness as well. So just go ahead and lightly press your garment um, along the hems at your ironing table and then we can move on to the buttons. Alright, so we are nearing the end of the Abbey dress. So now we can move on to the buttons. Here I'm just showing you all the pressed hems. Um, so go ahead and just fold your garment as if it were a finished dress. And then I like to kind of just place my buttons along the center front to see which buttons I want for this specific dress. Um, and we're also working with three quarter of an inch 
buttons. So if you just look on the back of the buttons inside your local fabric store or your Notion supply store, um, it will tell you the size of the buttons. So for the Abby dress, we're using three quarter of an inch buttons, but again, you can play around with whichever size buttons you prefer. Um, and here I'm just spacing three inches between each bottom of the button. So whenever you sew a button, you start at the bottom of the button and you work your way up towards the top. So again, I'm marking along the entire center front three inches apart for each button. And I'm working on view B of the Abby dress. So this is the mini dress and it has nine buttons total. Okay, so next we're going to sew our buttonholes and we're working on the right side front of the garment. And we're going to just attach our buttonhole foot to our sewing machine. You want to follow your specific sewing machine's instructions on how to do that. Um, and then you're just going to use those markings and you're going to sew your buttonholes along the entire center front of your garment. Again, the buttonholes go on the right side front and the buttons are going to be sewn on to the left side front. So again, just take your time on this step and make sure you have your buttons evenly spaced apart. You can play around with adding more buttons or taking some of the buttons away. Whichever you prefer, you can make this garment your own. But again, on the Abby dress, I have them spaced apart by three inches. Um, but you can do whatever you prefer for your garment. Um, just make sure you take your time on this step. I notice whenever I get to the very end of the garment, I actually like to take a little bit of a break before I come back to doing a very important step like adding buttons. Okay, so now we're going to hand sew our buttons to the left front of the garment. Here are a few of the tools that you're going to need. You're going to need your thread, of course. You're going to need a hand sewing needle, some scissors, um, a few sewing pins, uh, your buttons, of course, and you're also going to need a seam ripper. Make sure that I'm evenly attaching my buttons to correspond with my buttonholes. I like to lay the garment as if it were actually on my body. So I place the right front over the left front. Then I like to place a sewing pin through the center of the buttonhole. And that is going to tell me where I need to sew my actual button to the left side of the garment. So that's what you see me doing here. Whenever you're attaching your button, you do want to start from the bottom of the fabric. So the wrong side of the fabric and then you work your way up to the button. And this is just so you won't be able to see the thread knot on the right side of your fabric. We have to open up the actual buttonhole. So I place a sewing pin along the top of the buttonhole and then I place a sewing pin at the bottom of the buttonhole. And then I use my seam ripper to just tear an opening along the buttonhole. And the sewing pins are just there to make sure that you don't cut past your buttonhole stitching. Close your button in place. And then now I like to move on to the bottom button. And I sew that one in place. Then I just evenly attach my buttons throughout the entire garment. Again, just taking my time with this step to make sure everything is nice and even. All right, you guys, once you're done attaching all of your buttons to your Abby dress, you're all done with your garment. I really hope you guys enjoyed this sewing tutorial. Thank you so much for supporting our patterns. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And also a big thank you to all of our testers for the Abby pattern. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next sewing tutorial. All right, you guys, so that is it for the sew along video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you guys are interested in getting the Abby pattern, make sure you check the link in the description bar below and you can check out my other great patterns in the shop as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.